Uh, I think we're starting to digest the first quarter results last week. Last week it was overshadowed by Fed. Fed concerns. Yeah, the Fed minute meeting, uh, meeting minutes. Uh, coming into June, I think we're going to trade sideways because of the June 14, June 15 FOMC meeting. Uh, but until then, I think we're going to reach 7.6 then pull back because our PE is at 22. And historically, when we we're at this level, we pull back to 18, 19. It's a healthier level. Now, what has fueled this run, at least yesterday, was the property sector. It was the mm -hmm. one leading the way. Let's take a look at Vistaland. Now, you mm -hmm. cover Vistaland, yeah. and with the uh, appointment of Mark Villar in the DPWH, he has said his companies will not benefit from his appointment, but is the stock saying otherwise? Well, the stock, uh, fundamentally, it's sound. They have land bank in high growth areas, Iloilo, Davao. And uh, with the consolidation of star malls, their leasing income growth has uh, really increased. I think it's like 900% for uh, the first quarter, uh, first uh, FY16, uh, FY15. Uh, but then again, uh, the whole Villar angle, uh, it might be controversial for some in a political way, but again, the company's fundamentally sound. Now they've been buying back shares. The latest yeah. is 135,000 shares. Mm -hmm. How are you reading this? Oh, well, they do it strategically. Uh, they buy low, sell high, much like most investors. And uh, as, you know, as they're still allowed to do uh, as they're still allowed to participate in the share buyback program, I can see, I can still see them doing this, you know, until next year. I think it ends June 2017, if I'm not mistaken. Now, um, how then? What upside do you see for this particular stock? Uh, our target price By for this much? is around eight, eight pesos. Now, there, Villar is also planning on holding the IPO for Golden Haven, yeah. possibly in June. Yeah. Now, where well, Duterte has said that during his campaign, well, funeral parlors will be a yeah. good business mm -hmm. with all the the drug traffickers he'll be targeting. What's your outlook? Do you think it'll be received well? Oh well, in the states, uh, this isn't uncommon. I mean, the they call it death care. The, the death care business is pretty solid. Um, I mean, when they IPO, it's well received. But uh, considering the whole uh, death care angle, I mean, if they put it in some areas, land values will go down because no one wants to really live around cemeteries. Uh, but I, I expect the IPO to be well received. Now, let's go to another property stock. We have Mega World. It was yeah. just rated by at Goldman Sachs. Yeah. Now, it's up more than 2% for the year now at 4 pesos and 35 cents. Yeah. Where do you see it going? Well, they have strong leasing income growth. Last year, they reached 8.7 billion. This year, they're targeting 10 billion. They have high uh, land bank. They have lots of land bank in high growth areas. BGC, McKinley Hill. I mean, that's going on nicely. Um, our target price for Mega World is 550. And I mean, that's conservative. Even at that level, I still think it's undervalued. So you still have a lot of uh, upside yeah, for, for Mega World. Mm -hmm. Now, there's just this one stock I was interested in because you're watching this. IMI. Now, mm. you're pretty bullish about this particular sector. Now, it recently partnered with Magnica Europe. So mm -hmm. why are you so bullish about this stock? Well, um, it's not actually known by most people. Exactly. IMI. That's yeah, why it's, it's very it's, interesting. It's, it suffers from a lack of liquidity, but fundamentally, they're sound. They, they're riding on the back of uh, automated driving uh, systems. And uh, in the future, I mean, a lot of... We're just going to be a big trend. Yeah, a lot of speculators are saying there will be driverless cars. So if that really, you know, pumps up, IMI will really do well. Yeah. Because we have, if we take a look at the chart here, we're looking at their net income. Because their net income for the first quarter declined yeah. around um, um, almost 4%. Yeah, 4%. So that is not concerning. I think if we can look at the chart here, they, in our Bloomberg terminal estimates, are their, their net income will continue to rise by yeah. 2016 and 2017. Mm -hmm. So you share that sentiment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, their net income growth is still flat, but their margins are still sustained. They're transitioning to higher margin uh, automotive and industrial. Because before, IMI used to just be computing and consumers. So they're transitioning to that. And uh, as they successfully transition into those segments, the net income should shoot up. 